can't nobody do me like Jesus can't nobody do me like the Lord can't nobody do me like Jesus he's my friend he picked Say amen. Amen. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Amen. I want to share a scripture with you this morning from the 100th Division of Psalms. And it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Amen. The psalmist said after reading that now, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That is our, our, our hymn of praise this morning. We thank God for that. We thank God for you being here. And we just thank God for him still on the throne. Amen. Power in the blood.
Our Father, we pause right now to say thank you. Thank you for being so good to us. And, and it was only you that watched over us last night. And then not only that, you taught us with a finger of love. And you allow us to get up this morning. And so many of us had the activity of our limbs. And might not have been feeling the way you want, want to, but it's just good to be able to get up and, and sit around your breakfast table and have breakfast. Right now, as I speak, hospitals around the city, around the state, across the country, all over the world, nursing homes, someone is laying there. And, they don't have the ability to get up and move what we was able to do today. And not only that, uh, he watched over us as we made our way to Morningstar this morning to be able to worship one more time. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know, and, and so many believe across this world that God is good. He can, do, he can do all things but fail. And oh Lord, just bless our church, bless our pastor as he brings the word. And Lord, every church door that is open across this world, I pray that something is said that someone might be able to inherit and take on home with them. And Lord, those families that is in bereaved right now, we know it goes around in circles. And those families might have loved ones incarcerated somewhere. Have mercy on them and continue to be with them and bless them. And Lord, bless every auxiliary here at Morningstar as they go about their duties. And Lord, we just ask these and many more blessings. In Jesus' name I pray.
just who I am. I want you to tell them I am redeemed. Where there was hate, love now abides. Where there was confusion, peace now reigns. I'm walking with Jesus. I'm a child of the King. And it's all because I am redeemed. I'll tell of his favor. I'll tell, tell of his love. I'll tell it because God has been good to me. He purchased my redemption with his, his precious blood. And from sin, he set me free. Oh, I am redeemed, bought with the price. has changed my whole life. Oh, if anybody asks you just who I am, I want you to tell them I am Let the church say amen. 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 We certainly thank God uh, for um, our mail course ministry representing on today. And <clears throat> we certainly thank God for Brother Darrell ministering in song. Uh, you all, um, before I get into the message, I just want to extend a time of prayer. I have a number of prayer requests this morning. And uh, if you would, uh, uh, help me to do that at this time. <clears throat> I ask that you would remember uh, Brother Dwayne Willer in your prayers on this morning. Uh, this is the brother of our, our own brother Willer. And he's asking and soliciting prayers for him on today. And uh, I also ask that you would remember uh, the Reverend Carson and his family. Uh, his sister passed. And uh, I ask that you would uh, remember that family in a very special way. Uh, I ask also that you remember the family of Sister Lily Russell. Uh, her daughter passed. Uh, her name is Gwendolyn Love. And uh, the last I talked to Mrs. Russell, the arrangements were incomplete. Uh, but I ask that you would pray for
for the Russell family in a special way. I ask that you continue to remember Sister Don Jones and her family uh, as her sister passed and was laid to rest on yesterday. And then uh, I ask that you would uh, remember the Wallace family. Our own Sister Ethel Wallace uh, went on to be with the Lord this week. And uh, uh, as of now, the arrangements are incomplete, but we'll certainly make them available as soon as we hear them. But uh, again, our own Sister Ethel Wallace, uh, one of our greeters, ministry uh, leaders, and she's gone on to be with the Lord and ask that you would uh, continue to pray for that family. Would you join us in a word of prayer? God, our Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you. Can't get along without you, God. And Father, we just pause to just tell you, thank you, God. Thank you for early rising this morning and allowing us to see a day like no other day in which we've seen before. God, uh, we ask that you would forgive us of our sins and all of our trespasses. And God, uh, we come in the name of Jesus, oh God, lifting up uh, these persons, oh God. And God, uh, I pray that you would lay your healing hands upon uh, Brother Willer tonight. You know where he is and you know what he stands in need of. And so, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, oh God, touch his body right now, Lord Jesus. And then, God, uh, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would bring comfort, oh God, uh, to the Carson family, oh God, to the uh, Jones family, oh God, uh, uh, to uh, Sister Lily Russell's family, oh God. Master, we know that you're able to do all things, oh God. And God, we come believing and trusting that you would, oh God. And God, uh, we pray for the Wallace family, oh God. And God, uh, we thank you, oh God, for Sister Wallace and the blessing that she was to this ministry, oh God. And, and God, uh, we pray that you would lead and guide that family in their time of need, oh God. And then God, uh, we thank you for all who are gathered here this morning. And oh God, uh, somebody's name may not have been called, but you know what they stand in need of right now, God. And we ask in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you would make a way out of no way, oh God. And God, uh, I pray, oh God, even for the unspoken request, Oh God, those that stand in need of healing, oh God, those that stand in need of mercy, oh God, those that stand in need of financial blessing, oh God, I pray, oh God, that you would open the window of heaven and pour them out blessings that they can't even receive it all. And God, we ask now to bless now your preach word, oh God. Let your Holy Spirit lead us and guide us, oh God. God, give us wisdom, give us knowledge, and most of all, God, give us an understanding, oh God, that your name will be praised, your name will be glorified in the midst of it. Oh God, for we need you, Father, and we cannot get along without you. For we love you and we thank you for it, Father. We ask it in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And so it is. I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. Oh, he's my Savior. I, I come to ooh, I come to thee. In the old church we say yes, yes. Say, Lord, yes, I've got your word. I've, I've got your word. 
I've got your word. I've got your word. We got to go, y'all. I know we got to go. But he's been so good. He's, he's been mighty good. He's been so good. I can't testify for you, but he's been mighty good. He's been good. He's been mighty good. Amen. Amen. And I want to invite your attention this morning to the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 3. And uh, I want to begin reading at verse 17 Ephesians chapter 3 uh, uh, chapter chapter 3 began reading at verse uh, Actually, I'm going, to, I'm going to start at, at 14, but my, my sermon will consist of 17. Uh, for this cause, I bow my knee unto the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with the might of his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye been rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the depth and the height and the, uh, the depth and the, uh, excuse me, the breadth and the length and depth and height, amen, and to know the love of Christ, which passive knowledge that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. And now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church of Christ Jesus through all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. Thus ended the reading. You may be seated in his presence. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. For a few minutes, I want to uh, add a part two uh, to our uh, discussion of God's love. Uh, this is God's love part two. We shared uh, 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 two weeks ago uh, based upon 1 John chapter, uh, chapter 4, I believe it was, and uh, we've discussed about uh, the, uh, what God loves entails and uh, the personal, the power of his love. And uh, today I want to take it from a, a different uh, perspective uh, from the writings of Paul, Paul uh, who now has been imprisoned and, and uh, Paul who now finds himself locked down and chained down and and yet he writes to the church of Ephesus and he tries to encourage them uh, in their walk before God. Uh, he, uh, he, he shares uh, not just to the church of Ephesus but even to you and I on today but the letter specifically was written to, to the church of Ephesus and uh, he wrote it at a time when he himself uh, was struggling uh, for his own life and place. And yet, uh, Paul takes the time uh, to write this letter, uh, not just to his Jewish brothers, but he writes this to extend it to the Gentile community so that they may understand, even in the midst of this uh, reality, the, the things that they were facing at that time, Paul challenges them for this cause. We, we know that we are about the, the purpose and the plan of our God. And so Paul challenges them uh, uh, all throughout this third chapter, and he, he challenges them uh, about their gifts and uh, the working of the Spirit 
and the power of grace. And, and uh, he challenges them over and over again of what it means to be a part of the body of Christ. But he concludes this matter uh, around verses uh, 14 and 15, 16. And Paul says that uh, uh, in the end of this, I want you to know that I'm praying for you. Uh, Paul says, I bow my knees. I, I bow down on my knees and I, I call upon the Father on your behalf. And, and listen, my brothers and sisters, I just want to encourage somebody today, no matter what you may go going through, you may be going through, somebody is praying for you. Somebody is calling your name before God and somebody is lifting you up in your own predicament of life. And listen, and if, if you don't think nobody else is, listen, it's good for you to bow yourself, uh, to call upon the name of the Lord, because I declare he is faithful and he will hear and he will answer. Paul was no stranger to this idea. Paul knew that God will intervene. And, and listen, Paul says, I'm not even worried about my life right now. For to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Paul said, whatever they do to me, I'm not worried about that. Paul says, I've already got that under control. Paul says, I'm trying to help you in the midst of it. And Paul says, that's the conclusion of this matter. He says, I bow down daily. I bow down to the Lord on your behalf. And, uh, and he, he, he suggests in this case, he says that I want you to know that you are part of the family of God, all that God has extended unto us. And, and, and Paul lifts up this whole idea uh, that not only are we a, a part, but he says that, uh, that he would give you according to his riches and glory. And listen, I will argue, I'm so glad, my brothers and sisters, that God doesn't just give us based upon what's down here. But God's got a whole lot of stuff in his, at his disposal. And that's the reason why, y'all, you can't look, you can't base it upon what things look like. Can't base it upon what things uh, that you hear about. But listen, if you expect God to do it, listen, God has everything, this whole world at his disposal. The Bible says that he he, he, he helps them to, to understand that, that all of this, he says, that God will strengthen you by his spirit in your inner man. And, uh, and so Paul says that, 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 uh, that, 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 that ultimately, he says that you may dwell in your hearts through faith. <clears throat> Paul says that uh, he's not writing this to the sinner. He's trying to encourage the church at this time. And he says that when God... Uh, 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 saved you. When God came into your life, uh, he did it for a purpose. And he says that when God comes into your life, he says that he comes there permanently. He, he comes to dwell within you. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, none of us deserves God, but all because of his grace, he gives himself unto us. But listen, my brothers and sisters, he doesn't force himself. He says, if you will open up your heart, to receive me, he will come into your heart. And the Bible says, and, 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 and listen, and he's there because of who he is. I want to suggest, y'all, that number one, he, he dwells. And, and, and listen, y'all, that there's some stuff that comes to our life, it's only for a certain season of life. And, and before we know it, it's gone. But I want to argue, if you come to know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, he dwells in your hearts forever and forever and forever. But listen, y'all, I want to suggest, y'all, because of our hearts, uh, 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 we deal with a fleshly body. Uh, listen, sometimes our heart isn't as pure as it ought to be. But listen, I'm so glad that he doesn't get up and leave because I mess up. Because of my evil thoughts, because of my evil behavior, I'm so glad that we serve a God that won't walk away and leave me alone. He says that he, he dwells. But listen, I, uh, and I would argue, my brothers and sisters, because he dwells, he fills us with his spirit. And my brothers and sisters, and because we have his spirit, we have his love. Oh, help me somebody, y'all. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, when you are filled with God's spirit, one of the things that exhibit to let us know that you are filled with his spirit is your love. And your love is because of his love. We cannot love without him. 
And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, he says it dwells, it's in you. And my brothers and sisters, sometimes, y'all, you can possess a thing and not know that you have it. You, you, you remember when you first got your iPhone or your uh, iPad, and, you know, some of that stuff in there you didn't even know how to use it. <laughs> You hadn't even opened it up. And, and, and sometimes it takes our children and our grandchildren to come and show us, uh, Daddy and Granddaddy, that's what this means. Uh, and listen, we got all this stuff, uh, but we didn't even know that we had it. Listen, God got some stuff already on the inside of you by his spirit. And listen, and all you got to do is to make yourself available unto him, and God will reveal it in you. Listen, the, the Bible says it, it dwells within us. Uh, but, but he says that uh, I want you to understand the dimensions of his love. Not just the fact that it dwells in you, but lest I keep you too long. He says that I want you to understand the dimensions of, God, of God's love. And, and he, uh, he, he says this in this text, and, and he argues uh, 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 three or four things. There. He says that... <clears throat> Because you are rooted and grounded in his love. My, my brothers and sisters, uh, in order for his love to work, it has to have fertile ground. And he says that if, if I'm in you, he says that that must be ground for my love to grow. Now, I want to argue this, y'all, that his love, it's not that his love is trying to get bigger and bigger but you are being more and more exposed to his love. His love is still the same yesterday, it will be the same today, and will be the same tomorrow. But the more you come to know him, the more you come to experience his love. And listen, I have this on good authority, y'all. The more you experience his love, the more you can show his love to somebody else. Yes, listen, my brothers and sisters, he argues this text. He says that not only is it grounded, uh, but not only is it rooted, uh, 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 he says, but it's grounded in him. And, and it's just like a, a, a building. Uh, in order for it to, to really uh, move and have its stability, the foundation has to be right. And, and, and listen, and you want to make sure that your foundation is made properly. And he says that God, God, God matter of fact, Jesus used the illustration uh, of, of, of the two men building their houses. One deal built it on sand and, and, and the rains came and washed it all away. He, he says, but you've got to build it on the right foundation. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, on Christ, the Bible says, the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is seeking sand. I would suggest, my brothers and sisters, he says you got to be grounded, you got to be rooted. But then, then he says that you may comprehend. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, that, that, that not only must you dwell, but you must experience the dimensions of God's love. And listen, my brothers and sisters, the more time you spend with God, the more you comprehend what God is saying. And, and listen, it, 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 you know, and even the fact that Jesus loves me, it becomes realer and real. It's not just a simple thing, uh, but it's a powerful thing to know that he loves me. When did he start loving me? Oh, it wasn't because I first called him Savior and Lord. He loved me before then. He loved me before I was thought of by my mom and daddy. He loved me before my creation. He loved me. Why? Because he is love. Listen, he, he, he argues in, in this text, uh, when did he love me? Yeah, he says, uh, for that you may comprehend the breadth and the length. Uh, when did he love me? And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, it never started because he is love. He never started loving me because he is love. He always loved me. And listen, my brothers and sisters, if that wasn't enough, the Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, the world that he created, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, uh, that he, long as he exists, his love will exist. Yes, yes. Well, listen, my brothers and sisters, what then can I do to be discredited from his love? And 
I would argue, my brothers and sisters, because his love is not predicated upon me. His love is unconditional love. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, uh, 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 listen, uh, 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 we, we shared two weeks ago uh, that text found in Romans uh, uh, chapter 8, uh, 29, 30, uh, that the whole idea, uh, no, no, uh, no, nothing shall separate us from the very love of God. And listen, my brothers and sisters, I would argue uh, when he says nothing, it absolutely means nothing. <laughs> Whatever we have done cannot discriminate the love that God has for us. But then, my brothers and sisters, when will God stop loving us? Remember, uh, the Bible says that how often ought we forgive? And, and the question was brought to Jesus. And, and, and the Bible says not only that, but 70 yeah, yeah. times 70. And, and, and listen, and, and what he's saying here is not a number. Uh, but forgiveness ought to always be in place. Why? Because God always forgives us. And listen, my brothers and sisters, and because of that, the Bible says that we ought to forgive one another. And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, that how can you act as if you can't forgive when God has forgiven us every day? And yet, yet God says, uh, you can't forgive me because I'm God. But what you can do is to forgive one another. Listen, listen, my brothers and sisters. So, so I, I had nothing to do with when it started. And I really don't have anything to do when it stopped. Because his love is everlasting. <laughs> but his love is also eternal. <laughs> That even when this world shall be changed again, his love will still exist. My brothers and sisters, I would argue that not only uh, are we ask ourselves, when did I, I receive God's love? Uh, how long, uh, how wide is God's love? But look at this, how deep is God's love? And I want, I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, when I, when I began to look at this thing, uh, some words uh, came to mind. And uh, you remember when Jesus uh, had sat at the table with the disciples and the Bible says he, he shares with them their final meal together. And the Bible says he tells them that someone uh, will betray me. He, he says all these things and remind he institutionalized the Lord's Supper. And the Bible says there he went to pray. You remember the disciples was to wait for him as he went to pray. He was in, in the garden. And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, that God led him from the table to Gethsemane. Gethsemane was the place where he began to call upon God. Gethsemane, you remember, he, he, he asked God to allow this cup to pass over me. But he declared, nevertheless, <laughs> not my will, but thy will be done. Y'all, there's some things in life we don't want to have to go through. Uh, we, but, but I want to challenge us, we're not exempt from it. We, uh, listen, death will come all of our way. We, we have to experience that. Sickness will come. We have to experience it. Listen, Jesus says, uh, not my will, but thy will be done. And there he finds himself in the garden. And there the enemy comes uh, to take of him away. Remember, Peter gets smart and uh, becomes upset. And, and Peter takes out his sword and cuts off the ear of one of them. And you remember how Jesus responds, uh, 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 even your enemy. He, he comes back and he, he placed the ear back upon the man, heals of him, heals him. In the middle of his dilemma, he's still doing God's work. And listen, my brothers and sisters, but he moves from Gethsemane to Gabatha. Uh, uh, and Gabatha was the place where they placed him where he ministered, where he's before a court, and, and, uh, and, and they challenge him all night long. Matter of fact, the Bible says not only do they throw all kinds of evil against him, but they laid many stripes upon him. They put a phony thorn upon his head. They treat him as an uh, uh, unidentified king. And the Bible says, but he moves from that place to Gagotha. The Bible says he's laid upon a hill. And there he would take upon your sins and, and my sins. And, 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 and they, they, they said all manner of evil against him. But he, the old saints say he never mumbled one word against them. And the Bible says there he died 
at Golgotha, and there he died at Calvary. And the Bible says that they take him down from that old rugged cross. The Bible says he moves from Gethsemane to Gabatha, from Gabatha to Golgotha, from Golgotha they move him to the grave. The Bible says even in the grave, he goes through the depths of hell, and there he preaches deliverance in the very gates of hell. But oh, my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, that ain't how the story ends. Because he moves from the grave ultimately to glory. He now sits at the right hand of the Father, and he makes intercession on your behalf and my behalf. And I want to tell you, you want to know how much God loves you? He loves you so much that he was willing to go through the agony of Gethsemane. He was even willing to go through Gabbatha as they said all manner of evil against him falsely. He moved to Gabbatha where he hung, bled, and died for your sins and my sins. He moved to the grave that he was shared words of repentance and deliverance even to those in hell but he now sits at the right hand of the father why because he loves us and I want to argue my brothers and sisters who wouldn't serve a God like that that were willing to make himself available unto us and I would argue my brothers and sisters that when we look at that when we look how much God loves us when we recognize how high God is willing to go, he ascends up into heaven and he makes intercessions on your behalf and my behalf. But then I would argue, my brothers and sisters, not only does he dwell, not only are we look at the dimensions, but finally, my brothers and sisters, his love was demonstrated. He demonstrates his love at Calvary. He demonstrates his love then, but he's demonstrating his love right now. He allows us, he says, that you may know the fullness of him. And he says that you are uh, 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 to know the love of God with surpassive knowledge, that you may be fulfilled with all the fullness of God. God says, I want you to understand all that I am. I want you to receive all that I have in store for you. He says, I want you to have the fullness of all God is, not the fullness of who you are but the fullness of who he is. And he says, he says that, that I want to demonstrate that to you. But then, my brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you. He wants us to demonstrate that with one another. Because the world has never seen God, and neither have we. But all we have, we that have been born again, have experienced the love of Jesus Christ. And my brothers and sisters, that's what we are called to do, is we are to share with the world what Jesus looks like. And listen, he, they see us, uh, they see him through us. And the question this morning is, what, where are you in this relationship? Uh, what, what, where have you allowed God to do? And listen, my brothers and sisters, he says, I'll dwell in you. I'll show you every dimension of me. He says, but I just want to be demonstrated in your life. And he says that, that if, if, you, if you don't know how that can happen, he says, my final word to you, he says that if you would do this on my behalf, he says, this is what I'll do for you. And he concludes this matter. Now, under him, <laughs> oh, bless his name. Y'all, that'll preach all by itself, y'all. Not, not, not me, but now unto him, <laughs> who's able, and I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but we serve an able God. We serve a God that's able to heal us. We serve a God that's able to deliver us. We serve a God that's able to bring us through whatever shackles we find ourselves in. We serve a God that is able. He says, he says that he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all that you can, oh, help me somebody. Listen, whatever's in your mind, God's able to do more than that. Now, whatever you can seek and understand, he's able to do more than that. And listen, my brothers and sisters, he says, then you can ask or imagine according to the power that worketh in us. He says that it's already done, y'all, because my love is in you. And because I love you, I want the best for you. And if you believe that nothing Absolutely nothing uh, can can.
falter uh, because of my love for you. He says, all of these things, whatsoever you seek, he says, uh, 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 beyond what you can imagine, what you can measure, what you can comprehend, he says he's able to finish and to complete in you. But the question is, my brothers and sisters, uh, are you willing, are you able to release in him and allow him to work it in your good? He says, ultimately, uh, to him be glory in the church. And listen, y'all, he's not doing it so you can stand up and stick your chest out and talk about all you've done and, and talk about where you've been. But he says he does it for his glory. Oh, blessed be God. That's the reason why every time we come in God's house, we ought to shake a hand. We ought to love and we ought to give God praise for all that God has done. He's been too good for us to act like. Listen, and I, I want to have this on good authority. The reason why you ought to do it on Sunday morning, because you spent time on Monday morning and Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning giving God praise for what he's done. And listen, if you hadn't praised God yet, today, you ought to lift up your mouth. You ought to lift up holy hands. Give God praise for what he has done. Listen, I have it on good authority. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. Oh, help me somebody. I want to declare this to you, my brothers and sisters. Uh, God's love is great because he dwells in us. He, we're, we're, we're filled with his spirit and he gives us these dimensions that uh, the height, the depth, the uh, 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 all, all of this, uh, he says, uh, is how much I love you. He says, but all I need is somebody to demonstrate my love. The question this morning is, are you willing to surrender your life that he may demonstrate his love in you? God, our Father, we love you, we thank you, we honor you. Oh, God, we receive your gift. No, God, not because we earned it. Oh, but it was the gift that you've given unto us. And oh God, we believe that you are the Christ. We believe that you hung, bled, and died for our sins. We confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. And, and, and your word says that if we believe this, that we are saved. And God, we thank you for saving us, oh God. We thank you for breathing life into us. We thank you for spreading your love in our hearts, oh God. And now, oh God, help us that we may demonstrate that we love you uh, by the fact that you first loved us. And help us that we may love one another. God, we bless your name. And if there is one who's never trusted you or received you as their Lord and Savior, minister to them in this time of invitation. And Father, we'll be faithful to give your name glory, honor, and praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The door of the church is open. I invite you to come this morning. Let a Christian experience a candidate for baptism. Uh, this invitation is extended to you. Won't you trust him? Won't you receive him as your Lord and your Savior? Tell me where would I this invitation to you. Won't, you. won't you connect with him and watch him connect with you and make your life brand new? If it had not been for today. Where would I be? Let's stand together. The chorus of that song says, Oh, he kept my enemies away. Oh, he let the sun shine through a cloudy day. Cradle of his arms, 
has gone, so if it had not been for the Lord, oh my son, tell me where would I be? Brothers and sisters, I thank you all for your presence today. And uh, I, I, I don't know y'all. I, I, I miss our church. I miss our members. And, and, uh, and pray sooner than later we'll, we'll all be able to gather again. I, I know it's been some many, many, many months now uh, since we've all been able to worship together. And uh, I, I love you all. I, I miss you all. And let's pray ye for one another. Uh, as Christ will command us to do. God, our Father, we thank you for all our eyes have seen, all our ears have heard. Thank you for the sweet communion of, our Holy, of your Holy Spirit. Oh, God, lead us and guide us, oh, God, all across this week, oh, God. And God, I thank you for your word. God, thank you for your challenge on today. And God, we ask now that you would bless us indeed, enlarge our territory. Father, I pray your hand be with us. We ask that you keep us from sin and evil, that we may not cause pain. We ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Please, uh, if you would, uh, uh, allow our urchins to lead you today. Uh, they're going to lead us in our exit. We're going to exit from the front. Well.